Before starting a pre-approval, you will need to gather a few pieces of information. First, you will need the conference registration fee. You will also need the conference agenda or schedule. You will need to know the estimated flight cost, the estimated hotel cost, and any other accommodations, expenses, or fees relating to the trip. As you can see here, I have all of these items ready to go in the tabs of my internet browser. All of this documentation will need to be attached to your request. So what I would suggest doing right now is saving each of these as a PDF. To do this, click on File, then Print. If Save PDF is not selected in the Destination field, you can quickly change it. Click Save and create a new folder where you can save all the other documentation for your trip. Once you have the required information, head back into Chrome River and click the plus sign in the pre-approval header to start the process. For the report name, I'm going to type the name of the conference. I've already worked out that I can take a flight in the morning of the first day of the conference and a flight home in the evening of the last day. Therefore, my start date would be October 6th and my end date would be October 8th. There are times where you may have to travel the night before or leave the following morning in which you would adjust the start and end dates. Your trip technically starts as soon as you leave your home campus or residence. Anything that is grayed out, you cannot change. Here, you want to briefly describe what the trip is for. This particular conference is for staff professional development. Some other examples could be presenting at a conference, field trip with students, or research. This trip is strictly business, therefore I'm choosing no for personal use. As a reminder, the state of Rhode Island will not pay for any personal aspects of the trip. That is the sole responsibility of the traveler. Since I'm a staff member, I would choose general travel. But you can see there are other categories for athletics, faculty, grant, and student. I'm an employee of CCRI, so I will choose Travel Employee. For location, enter the city where the conference is taking place. You want to enter the fiscal year that the trip will be taking place. Since this is in October, I will choose FY23. If you would like to take out a cash advance, you can enter the amount here. If not, please leave it blank. Here is where you would enter your FOPL details. The first box is for fund. Once you enter that, the following two boxes that pop up are for organization and program codes. The great thing about this is that you can search by the code, as I did for the fund, or you can search by the name, as I'm doing here. If you need to split the total cost across multiple FOPLs, you can click Add Allocation to enter additional FOPLs and the amount to be split. Click Save at the top right to move on to the next section. This page is where you will enter all of the information that you gathered before. Starting with my flight, I'm going to click on Air Travel and then airfare. I'm going to put in the total amount. You can enter a description if you want to, but it is not required. Click save at the top right. Next, hotel. Same thing here, I'm going to enter the total amount for the trip. Save. Next, I'm going to add the registration fee for the conference. Click on Professional Development 
and then conference slash seminar. Save. I know I need to take a shuttle to and from the hotel, so I'm gonna click on ground transportation and then taxi slash car service. Save. Next, I'm gonna add my meals. So you want to enter the time that you will be leaving your house or home campus to travel and then the time you get back. The description is optional. For a per diem type, most trips will be standard, but if you are using agency funds, you could choose agency reduced or agency regular. Click add entries and it will automatically calculate how much you are allowed per day for meals. Click add to report and they will show up in your list of items. Once you have entered all information, the last step is to attach the documentation that you gathered at the beginning of this process. To do that, click on the title of the request, which will show the full details of the trip and scroll to the bottom. Click on Upload Attachments and select all of the PDFs. Do one last review to ensure accuracy. If you notice an error, click on the item that contains the error and click Edit at the top right. The same goes for deleting items. The delete button is located next to the edit button. If you forgot to add an item, you can click the plus button to bring back the tiles. After review, click submit. An attestation will appear asking for you to confirm that all information is correct to the best of your knowledge. Click submit and if there are no errors, you will see it disappear from the list to the left. To recall or track where it is in the approval process, you can go into the menu, find the pre-approval section, and select Recently Submitted. From a quick glance, you can see that it is still pending. If you click on the trip, the right side of the window will populate with the details of the trip along with a tracking button. Here you will see which step it is currently on and view who else needs to approve. There are some steps that are computer generated. For example, this checks the budget to make sure you have the funds to support the trip. You can also see details like when the approval was assigned to the person and its current status. If you want to withdraw your request, or fix an error you didn't catch before, you can click Recall, where it will move your request to your drafts so you can either fix it or delete it altogether. You can then access it again by going into the menu, looking for the pre-approval section, and clicking on Draft. Please note that if you recall your request and submit it again, it will have to go through the approval process from the beginning.